Welcome everybody to my absolute ultimate top 50 favorite anime of all time bracket revisited close bracket five years ago I started this very channel and throughout its first year I made what became one of my most iconic anime top lists the top 50 best anime of all time a list of my personal favorite anime my name is Misty slash Kinesia and today five years later I'm revisiting this list Back then, I cared a lot more about what people would think, so a lot of entries were there purely because I didn't know how to handle the hate if I hadn't put them on. Now I'm going 100% genuine. This is truly my favorite 50 shows as of May 2019. If you follow my channel, you know that I've seen almost everything that's available. Boiling it down from over 9,000 anime to 50 is absolutely insane and should not be attempted by mere mortal. Not everything that's good is on this list, not even the classics. The only thing here are anime that hit home for me in one particular way or another. Have a seat as I spend the next 40 plus minutes telling you about the 50 anime that had the most impact on my life. This is gonna be something big, I assure you. Hi. Number 50. Kaleido Star. Kaleido Star is the first one on this list, but it's also the first one to beat 8,950 other shows, so don't let that rank 50 make you think it's not good enough. It absolutely is. Kaleido Star is an anime about a young girl who, as a kid, saw a circus troupe performance and was completely smitten by the magical appeal of the show. She vows to join the troupe years later, and when she turns 16, she tries out for it. This show made me cry in its first episode and I'll forever remember it for that and its cool music and characters, the whole package truly. I'm that, then this time I'll kill you for sure. <laughs> Number 49, Buso Rankin. Get ready to see a crap ton of shonen in this list. They're my favorite genre. What is Buso Renkin beside a super obscure title no one is willing to pick up nowadays? Well, it's an anime about alchemy and a main character who dies one night after being attacked by a monster only to be rescued by a mysterious girl. Buso Renkin has some of the most wacky yet memorable characters I've seen from Japan and the fact there's a hint of romance inside this complete story was good enough to make the cut. Number 48, Honobono Log. Honobono Log is a short compilation of romantic slice of life snippets featuring many faces of life through many couples. Every episode is two minutes long. The anime is incredibly minimalist, barely any background at all, no shading whatsoever in such few animated frames, it barely counts as an anime. Yet it pours with so much love and it just feels so relatable that I can't stop myself from smiling purely from the heart through every episode. It goes to show that it doesn't need to be a high quality budget anime to leave a dent in someone's life. <laughs> Number 47, Juni Tyson. I think Juni Tyson is what many people would describe a guilty pleasure. The anime is a survival one a la Battle Royale, which is also a genre I absolutely love to devour. The story begins with 12 famous mercenaries, each labeled under a symbol of the zodiac, and they must fight each other to the death until only one is left alive. Fair warning if you plan on picking this one up, the ending theme song will spoil you, so make sure you don't watch it if you don't want the winner to be revealed. Also, final episode to me was a masterpiece, but different strokes for different folks, I guess. Number 46, Koei de Oshigoto, sexual comedy. Everybody's gotta have room for that, at least a little bit. The story is about a teenage girl who lends her voice to her sister who makes erotic game for a living. She's shy and a prude, it's absolutely fantastic to see her struggle through every challenge. Everything is censored, that's not the beauty of this anime, it's about how she gets to deal with this. There's only two episodes, but god I wish they were ten times more. <sighs> Number 45, Capetta. Extremely overshadowed anime about karting, which eventually becomes Formula One racing. The story begins with a young boy who is quite poor, but he has a passion and a talent for racing. 
I didn't think I'd end up liking this anime so much, but the sheer determination to succeed tied with an absolutely orgasming score, you just can't go wrong. I watched this anime in 2007, and I can now see how the CG didn't quite age all that well, but if you're looking for a dark horse, this is one I heard you to give a chance to. Number 44, Detective Academy Q. I'm not usually one who has an appeal for investigations. Nine times out of 10, I end up hating those show because of how predictable they are to me. So whenever a show can bamboozle me, I welcome it with excitement. Detective Academy Q was just the itch I needed scratch. It's thinking outside of the box solution to puzzles made every new challenge captivating to try and solve. And for once, they weren't so glaringly painfully obvious. It also had fun characters that complement each other's too. Great show to get your gears turning, honestly. Number 43, Kokoro Connect. The masturbation scene in this anime. If you haven't seen the show, let me explain. Kokoro Connect is a wacky supernatural rom-com drama where a group of five friends bond through some mysterious events like body swapping, mind reading, and so forth. In one of the episodes, I think it's episode 3, one of the guy admits to one of the girl that he masturbates to her. Of course, they end up flustered as teenagers do, but by the end she reveals she does the same too. Something about this felt like genuine human interaction beyond trying to just deliver fan service. Every episode has some deeper richness to it, and it's one I can't recommend enough. Number 42 Devil is a part timer. Let's talk about this bad boy for a second. Devil is a part timer is a reverse isekai anime. Instead of a normal guy going into a fantasy world, you have a fantasy demon lord coming into our mundane life and he has to pay rent. So he gets a job at a makeshift McDonald's because copyrights or whatever. But then you also see him deal with romance while a heroic knight is chasing him down. It's just the perfect balance between comedy, action, and a captivating storyline. I would kill to get a sequel. I mean, not literally, but I'd be really, really happy if they did one. Number 41, Madoka Majika. Madoka Magica was a game changer for me. I saw it back in 2011 under the recommendation of a friend, and it truly changed my perspective on Magical Girl anime. If you haven't seen it, I won't spoil it, but it's a watch it, trust me, it's good scenario. I do find it disheartening that ever since they did this anime, every new Magical Girl anime tried to mimic the formula. But beyond its amazing episode 3, the ending was also quite phenomenal too. From the beautiful soundtrack to the unique visuals in the witch world a la arts and crafts, all the way to the fun characters and resounding storytelling, it's one of the rare anime I would give a full score to. Number 40, No Game No Life. I think everyone who has seen No Game No Life likes it for reason or another. Personally for me, it's episode 6 that truly won me over. The gimmick of the show follows two siblings as they travel to a new world where every dilemma is solved through playing a game. Of any kind truly, from paying for a meal through a game of chess to winning a country over rock, paper, scissor. These two siblings are renowned to be unbeatable, so when they arrive in this new world, they take it up by storm and start a revolution as well as a winning streak. It's a very clever anime. Number 39, Nichijo. Nichijo is probably an anime you've heard me mention in the past if you follow me around a bunch. Nichijo is a comedy revolving around several teenage girls. It's a slice of life school comedy, so there isn't much plot progression, but that is traded off for slapstick comedy, running gags, and over the top jokes that will make you laugh so hard you'll be holding your sides. The wackiness, the randomness, everything is delivered with incredible timing. And while the art style may look more on the simplistic side, it allows for some really powerful moments you will not regret. It's a great time altogether. Number 38, One Out. 
I don't expect a lot of people to find the appeal of One Outs as captivating as I did. One Outs is an anime about baseball, but then again it's so much more than that. One Outs is a story about a talented gambler who gets hired to become the pitcher for a losing baseball team. For each outs he scores, he wins $50,000. For every run he lets through, he has to pay $500,000. It's in yen, but I made the conversion for simplicity. The anime used a really intricate cat and mouse mind game between the players, the manager, and the main character who always tried to come out on top. It's fascinating, even if you're not into baseball. <laughs> Number 37, Dead Men Wonderland. Arguably, m maybe not a fan favorite, but a show I enjoyed quite a lot nonetheless. From the over the top gore to the creative situation the characters are put into, everything appealed to me. I already told you about my guilty pleasure of survival story, and this is another one just with that mindset. Add to this a really cool bunch of plot twists, fun characters, and a manga that has a full story. There's just so much to sink your teeth in this one that you won't end up disappointed. I mean, beside the fact the anime is dead in the water, but those 12 episodes really made a great bridge for the manga. <laughs> Number 36, Black Rock Shooter. Five years ago, this anime was in my top 5. While I'm still wholeheartedly convinced of its greatness, I'm downgrading it to this rank because I was a little biased originally. The story makes its way through mental illness and follows two girls in high school who starts a friendship together. Until one day, one of the girls starts to feel left behind and you see her spiral down in a cup of crazy. The whole thing switched back and forth with an alternate universe where these girls have personas fighting off against one another. The mental insight you get on the characters is really rich and something you can't really find in every anime. Number 35, Planetis. Planetis is not an anime I've seen anyone mention, but it's absolutely my favorite space one out there. There's no mecha, no gimmicky transformation or space battles. The show focuses on a dramatic romance in the confine of space. A girl is hired to be a janitor in space and collect debris in orbit around the Earth and Moon. While she loves her job, she soon realizes her crew and her are kind of the laughingstock for the rest of the station. The ambience is mesmerizing and the anime delivers some really deep insight while you drift out in space. It's a beautiful show. Number 34, Chibi Vampire Karen. There's something purely whimsical that really connected the dot for me and Karen. I don't usually like vampire stories, I find them too dark and grim, but Karen was just the right shade of mellow for me to enjoy. A cute anime about a vampire girl who's in love and when she gets horny, uh, sorry, overwhelmed. Yeah, let's use that term because I don't want to get demonetized. I, I do understand not a lot of people would go out of their way to pick it up. It's almost 15 years old at this point, but I still remember it fondly as a heartwarming story with a pretty satisfying ending. Overall, a good rom-com with a vampire gimmick theme. Number 33, Carol and Tuesday. Yes, yes, I do know there's only three episodes out at the moment. But for a lot of people, we all have one anime where the drama, the melodies, and the ambience really strike our core. For some people, it's Your Lie in April, other is it's Angel Beats, and while those two are absolutely fantastic shows I had to sadly cut out of my list, Carol and Tuesday is one I just simply not pass over. Within the first three episodes, only this show has completely won me over. I know some people are like, wait till the ending, it might be crap, but no, those first three episodes were enough for me to secure a spot on this list. The soundtrack is phenomenal, the visuals stunning. The premise of up and coming musicians reminds me of Beck and many more, but this one connects with me on a spiritual level I can't get enough of. Number 32, Gantz. Gantz has always had a special place in my heart when it came down to horror and gore. 
it did so many things right. The survival aspect, the you never know who's safe or not, no one is immune to death, and I really like that. For once, there weren't a shred of plot armor. Granted, a lot of people didn't like the later part of the anime that was fillerish, but I, I liked it. It got me into reading the manga, and to this day, it's still one of my favorite. Guns is a story about when you die, you're being summoned in a game where you need to score 100 points to get a, uh, let's call it a wish, back. A little bit on the older side, but so worth the time. Number 31, Shirobako. An anime about making an anime, it's very meta. But for someone like myself who has been working on making his very own anime, don't worry, that chapter's not over yet, by the way, just on the down low, I truly can't talk about it. But I did connect with Shirobako. The craft and the fun characters really built an interesting behind the scene outlook on the whole media. I always had an affinity for those kind of shows where you learn about the actual job and the workflow and the lingo and everything. Shirobako had a perfect balance with people you really invested yourself with and wanted to see them succeed. It's truly moving. <laughs> Number 30, Monster. It kind of hurts me to put monsters so high on this list, but the rest always kind of edge it out by a tiny bit. The only reason I put Monster so high is because I predicted the ending, but that's my problem and it shouldn't take anything away from the masterpiece it is. A story about a brain surgeon who must make a difficult choice, either operating on a little kid or the mayor. Only one can survive and the doctor must live with the repercussion it brings. The moral compass is so heavy in this one, it's nothing shy of pure brilliance. <laughs> Number 29, is it wrong to try and pick up girls in a dungeon, aka Danmachi. Danmachi is just clean fun. It's exciting battles, entertaining characters you start by hating and eventually grow to love. I'm enamored with the whole mythology background and every episode's constantly build upon itself for a climactic end that sent shivers down my arms. There's not a lot of deeper meaning to this one, it's just watching a mindless action flick and you know what? Sometimes it's what you need to see a badass character serve out some mech-ass whooping. Now, I'm not gonna apologize for loving this anime, and with a second season on the horizon, I feel they can just build upon the story even more. <laughs> Number 28, Peach Girl. I debated a lot between choosing Peach Girl or Golden Time because I like them both equally. In the end though, I went for Peach Girl because I feel it's lesser known and more likely to impact your life positively. But on the off chance you've seen Peach Girl and not Golden Time do the old switcheroo. Peach Girl is another romantic anime, but this one is hanging out more on the melodramatic note. The show is about a girl with a very tan skin and her love triangle problem as she tries to date a guy she's in love with while struggling with the biggest cock block in the history of antagonists. Man, do I love hating that girl throughout the whole show. Ending also made me cry, so uh, that's always a bonus for me. <laughs> Number 27, Soul Ether, A very colorful Halloween-ish anime about a group of students who must collect 99 souls and a witch's one. <laughs> this joke is never getting old on me. Every student at the academy teams up with another one, one as a weapon wielder and the other one as the weapon itself. Creative battle, great soundtrack and a very good climactic end. The manga is even better, but the anime is nothing to sneeze at. Some didn't like the ending, but it was A-OK -okay in my book. But just as the title imply, we don't talk about Soul Ether not. In my heart that's non-canon and we're gonna stick to the actual story about madness. Everyone's cool with that. Motion passed. Number 26, Yamada's First Time. Yeah, there's still a few comedy on this list. Yamada's First Time is a sexual comedy. Yeah, they're my kind of humor still. Sue me. The story is about a teenage girl and her sexual awakening of wanting to bone 100 guys. Prime thought material, yes. However, despite her, uh, let's call it ambition, 
You soon realize she ain't got no game, fam. So you follow her through 12 episodes as her quest to 100 dude eventually slims down to just falling in love with one guy. Despite the topic, you don't actually see a lot of etchy stuff, but when you finally do, it's hinted out almost like a reward and feels very satisfying. A pervy show, no doubt, but done in a very tasteful way. Number 25, Sangatsu no Lion. You gotta have a heart of stone if you remain emotionless throughout this anime. March Comes in Like a Lion is a story about a shogi prodigy who bonds with a family of sisters. Oh, shogi is a Japanese game kinda similar to chess, although not exactly the same. I love the music in this anime, even just the first episode. The songs in French are a delightful touch. I'm a big sucker for Bump of a Chicken, which did both the opening and the ending of this anime. The show has a really poignant story about the same level than, say, Your Lie in April, but I like Sangatsu more thanks to the inner monologue and the struggle and everything in between. Absolutely recommend this one, and the rank 25 truly doesn't give it the justice it actually deserves, but yeah, what you gonna do about that? Number 24, Tokyo Magnitude 8.0. Tokyo Magnitude 8.0, just like Monster, was another one kind of predictable to me. However, in this case here, it's more of a uh, the journey counts more rather than the ending angle. A story about two siblings who goes to a museum far from home and how a sudden powerful earthquake throws a massive monkey wrench in their day. They meet a kind lady who offers to bring them back home and you follow their struggle during this post-apocalyptic catastrophe. It's a very touching story about bonding and other stuff I can't flat out say without spoiling. But trust me, it's a very underrated show worth every second, especially if you like drama. <laughs> Number 23, Welcome to the Classroom of the Elite. Classroom of the Elite is a show I didn't think much of at first, but it's a proof that a really good premise, or concept rather, along with a well-delivered unexpected plot twists can have a big impact on viewers. The show is about a school managed by the government where each month students are given points to pay for everyday items instead of money, perform well in class versus the other classes, and you earn more points. Some students are more frivolous with their currency and end up starving. The show has incredible psychology where people need to work together to carry the more struggling students, and overall it's a series I would love to get more content of. Number 22, Overdrive, an anime about cycling. While a lot of sports enthusiasts would pick Yowamushi Pedal, for me, Overdrive really hit home. One of the rare anime that got me to cry, and it was in episode 17, overcoming all the odds and pushing past his limit, it absolutely hit me in the feels and left me as a complete wreck, honestly. It left a lasting impression that even a decade later, I still think about, at least monthly. While the ending wasn't flawless, the show in its entirety was more than satisfying, and to me, it wrapped itself right up to my taste. Number 21, One Punch Man. I think everyone who calls itself an anime fan has seen One Punch Man, so I don't really need to sing its praises. But at the same time, I think I connect to it because while I also share Saitama's looks in real life, because I'm super bold. I also kind of have his demeanor. Being overpowered is his whole purpose, so the fact they managed to make this running gag still darn captivating after so many episodes is a true testament of the universe and its characters being charismatic beyond doubt. If the action doesn't win you over, the comedy definitely will make a dent. I don't have to explain why it's on this list, honestly I truly don't. <laughs> Number 20, Chunigyo de Mokoi Gashitai. While some people might consider this anime cringy, I, for one, am thoroughly fascinated by the actual psychology commentary this anime offers. Of course, it's ambushed through kick-ass action scenes and over-the-top comedy, but the message is still there. 
I remember being a kid and having this childlike wonder that you just lose with the years. It's part of growing up, but this anime is a nice trip down memory lane. Call it nostalgia if you will, but the overall ambience this anime has took no time to win me over. <laughs> Number 19, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. 19? Really? There must be a mistake, you thought to yourself in disbelief. But now it's, it's where I'm putting it down despite maybe better judgment. Go ahead and hurt my dislike ratio if you must, I don't care. Full Metal Alchemist took me six tries to get into it. I didn't like the comedy, short jokes got old real fast and, well, it was way more political than I care for back then. But my wife insisted I stuck with it and I'm glad I did because the story ended up being astonishing. The ending, truly one of the best of all time and I don't give that award easily. It's what really salvaged it for me and put it in my top 20. I'm sure for many it's much higher on the list, but whatever, blame it on my shit taste. Like you always do! Number 18, Run With The Wind. Run With The Wind is an anime I just saw recently. A story about a bunch of college students teaming up to take on the Hakone Ekiden race, a marathon-like relay race where every leg of it is 20 kilometers long. Seem inconspicuous enough, but the group of misfits feature 8 people who are far from being top shape runners. With only one year in preparation, they must shave off their time to meet the qualifying requirement. This anime is jaw-dropping good. From the life inside to the entertainment, the show delivers on every front. Episode 19 had me in tears. Keep running, you piece of shit. I love you so much. <laughs> Number 17, Batum. Another survival game. Don't worry, there's still at least another one on this list. Batum starts off being a video game where people are dropped on an island and must spar with technological Pokeball that act as makeshift grenade to blow up their opponents. All fun and dandy until they make an actual live version with actual player, just like the movie Condemn with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Blooming romance amidst the chaos, multiple cases of mental scars, and a high paced, high octane game that keeps you on the edge of your seat. This anime deserves a sequel so much. <laughs> Number 16, Ice Shield 21, American Football. Sure, it's not for everyone, I get that. Sports anime are incredibly niche, but back in the day, there wasn't much variety for anime, so we picked what was available and we liked it that way. Jokes aside, Ice Shield 21 is about a wimpy kid who runs away from trouble and find a usefulness for his skill as a running back for the school's football team. The show does a wonderful job at explaining all the convoluted sports rule in a way that doesn't overwhelm newcomers and now I make it a tradition of watching the Super Bowl every year with my family and friends. It's the little things. <laughs> Number 15, Ore Monogatari. I don't think there's any pure anime out there, shy of maybe number 11, we'll get to it. But when it comes down to a romance, Ore Monogatari was everything I wish I could have hoped and more. A story between a burly, massive guy who begins a relationship with the tiniest, tiniest girl. He just wants to protect her and love her and care for her and she just wants his monster cock. No, truly she does. Just watch the show, she implies it multiple times. Yet the anime remains wholesome and as opposed to a lot of anime who build up to a relationship, this one starts with one, which is honestly a breath of fresh air. No drama, just pure and genuine love and support. It's fascinating. <gasps> Number 14, Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicles. Tsubasa is another anime with a soundtrack gemstone, paired that with a grandiose adventure going across the multiverse to pick up fetters, aka memories, aka part of a girl's personality, because otherwise she's just as fun to talk to to a brick wall. It's a recipe for success. Every new world has its own gimmick rule set that the character must adapt to. Sometimes it's a world based on magic, others are puzzles, and so on. 
The variety is endless and the story really builds upon it with rich characters that are all more likable than the others. <gasps> Number 13, Parasite the Maxim. Parasite the Maxim is the perfect horror series for me. Based on a manga from the 80s slash 90s, it's cleverly modernized to add cell phone implications and whatnot. A story of a virus, or well, rather a parasite, that takes host in the body of human people and transform them into murder monsters. The main character that prevents his invasion that transform his right hand into a weapon with a mind of its own. A soundtrack that's just purely divine and a story that's all wrapped up within the span of 24 episodes. An absolute must watch if you're not too squeamish around the edges cause there's blood by the gallons in this one. Number 12, The Rising of the Shield Hero. Rising Shield Hero is a garbage fire that I love to watch burn. That's how I always put it because well, that's what it is, it's nothing worth of being critically acclaimed, there's no novelty, no commentary, no fresh idea, but it takes an already existing formula and it just does it perfectly, which makes me devour every episode like Jabba the Hutt at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Oh, and playing me solo. That's a terrible impersonation, I'm sorry. A video game gimmick of leveling up for a character that must rely on party members after he got burned by a treacherous princess. It's predictable, but fuck, I love it so much. <laughs> Number 11, Sweetness and Lightning. Told you we would get to it. I think as a father of two daughters and one of them being a two-year-old, I relate dearly to Sweetness and Lightning. In this anime, you have a single dad who caters to his three-year-old child whose only interest in the world is discovering and tasting new food. The bonding between them is so overwhelming and blissful you can't stop yourself from smiling. If you have a child around that age, you'll connect even more deeply with it. If you don't, you'll still get crushed by all the moe available. It's a very, uh, you need to try it to understand show, but it will win you over in a heartbeat. And now we enter the Hall of Fame, the number 10, Yamada-kun and the Seven Witches. Yamada-kun and Seven Witches hit absolutely every note dead center in the head like a murderer. All the stars aligned for me and made me fall in love with this show. A romantic comedy about seven mysterious girls with supernatural power that the main character, Yamada, must find and identify. But to trigger their ability, he must kiss them. Body swapping, mind reading, beautiful girl, and a story that wasn't pointlessly watered down to end with a bang really wrapped the whole thing up with a bow on top for me. <laughs> Number 9, we got my boy Cells at Work. Cells at Work is a magnificent piece of work that I could talk about for hours. It's an episodic comedy that uses biology and medical knowledge in one of the most creative way I have ever seen. The show follows the cells living in a microcosm of the human body and their everyday task to make sure you don't die. Red blood cells deliver oxygen, white blood cells stops infections, platelet, oh my god, the platelets are so adorable. I mean, they clot the blood and so forth. The analogies have so much richness that I always find myself discovering new things as I watch the episodes. The perfect balance between entertaining and informational, you could legit use this to teach a classroom of students, I feel like. <laughs> Number 8, My Hime. My Hime has a special place in my heart. From the survival game to the amazing soundtrack and everything in between, My Hime is an absolute treasure people should pick up at one point or another. The story follows Mai, a girl who moves into a new school that hides an underground legend. Thirteen girls are selected to become Hime, aka princesses, and they must fight each other with supernatural abilities while risking the one person they love the most in the world as collateral for losing. As you guessed it, it's another survival game, so that's why I love it so much. But it has only one crown winner, and everyone is extremely likable, so good luck figuring out who ends up with the prize. It's a masterpiece in my book.
Number seven, skip beat. Oh my god, my hype meter just keeps increasing. If you haven't figured out by now, determination slash willpower is a huge chord for me. That really hit deep for psychological reasons I don't have time to get into. Skip beat is right in tune with that. A story about a girl who's been wronged and vowed to get her revenge by becoming an entertainment icon. Realizing how cruel and ruthless the industry actually is towards its idol, it drives in both a social commentary of that kind of world, while still making you connect and bond with Kyoko, the main girl character, which to this day I still think is one of the best written character available. <laughs> Number six, Lovely Complex. Lovely Complex is possibly one of the first fully focused on romance dramedy I've watched and it always held a special place in my heart for being a tale beyond just love. It's about perseverance and never giving up. You might have noticed I mentioned the soundtrack quite often, but that's because it does play an important part for me. And yet again, in Lovely Complex, it simply slays Queen. It is my favorite romance out there and nothing has ever came close to dethrone it. So do consider it if you like romantic stories and you've never watched it. Rinksis is really, really solid. If you if you haven't heard the hype in my voice already. Soma. Huh? Okay, 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 top five. Number five, Food Wars. You know, besides anime, I have a few interests in real life too, like a normal person. One of them is the medical field, like I said in Cells at Work. But another one is cooking and Food Wars, ever since it came out in 2015, has been nothing but excellent. Both on the entertainment front and on the craft itself, it is both informative and captivating. The food looks delicious and there is a true joy, a very true one at the very least for me, to eat something while watching an episode of Food Wars, I can only hope they will bring it back soon, because I am craving so hard for it. Number 4, Assassination Classroom. I was kind of mellow toward this anime at first, but this is the proof that an absolutely amazing ending can catapult you from down to the 30s all the way to rank number 4. I'll admit I have cried while watching several anime and I always commend them when they manage to pull a few tears out of me, but no show had me flat out sobbing for 15 minutes straight the way Assassination Classroom did. It is so thoroughly masterful I simply can't fathom to put it in words. A story about a class of students thought to become assassins to prevent a catastrophic doom of the earth. It's truly enchanting. Number 3, Hitman Reborn. Hitman Reborn is a chainsaw. It's a slow and grindy 30 episode-ish start. But boy, when it kicks off, bitch, you're gonna cut through the episodes like a turkey on Thanksgiving. We at Misty Slash Grenixia HQ do not recommend you carve your turkey with a chainsaw. It's gonna be all oily and shit, and uh, you, you get the picture. Hitman Report is a story about a wimpy kid who inherits the job of becoming the next mafia boss. Through being filtered by a baby, to not mature from a little bitch into a a lesser little bitch. Look, take me up on faith and there are 30 episodes and will change your life for the better. Or don't, but I hope you realize this is the number 3 spot, so I'm just saying. <laughs> number 2, Hunter x Hunter 2011. Hunter x Hunter is a masterpiece on every front and everyone who's never seen it just can't grasp how incredible it is. Sure, it's a story about a 12 year old going on an adventure, but you're delusional AF if you think this is a kid show anything like Pokemon. This anime gets dark and by the time you hit episode 3, you'll realize you already wish it had twice the amount of episodes if not more. You'll get sucked into an alternate dimension where time become a relic of the past as you binge every episode forgetting you had class two hours ago. Forgetting your kid at daycare because of how invested, I never did that by the way, how invested you'll be in this anime. It is in my book the greatest of all time. And finally number one, Card Captor Sacrifice. Are you disappointed? I'm not. 
This is my absolute favorite anime of all time. Cardcaptor Sakura was the first show I watched as a kid and it got me into watching everything else. It, it truly changed my path. A story about a teenage girl who opens up a book containing magical cards and she let them escape around town. She must retrieve them and build her magical power at the same time. I thought it was nostalgia at first, but after rewatching it recently, I can assure you this anime would stand the test of time and is, in fact, greatness incarnate. The soundtrack is amazing, the Blu-ray makeover is gorgeous, and the story is still my absolute favorite of all time. Don't think of it as a kid show, it is so much more than that. But we don't talk about the clear card sequel, at least not yet, I'm not ready. Maybe if that sequel gets a sequel, then they'll fix it, but Jesus Christ. Stick to the original! Again, I can't stress how much I struggled to bring this list down to 50. Some shows I had to cut out despite me loving them to their core just because there was another aspect I appreciated more in one of the titles who made the list. 9,000 franchise, over 9,000 franchises, it's not even a meme, it's literally 9,000. Boil down, 250 is a colossal task. I dare you to try. I'm sorry if your favorite didn't make the cut, this isn't a list about you, it's about me. Of which show was objectively the best, this was purely my subjective taste. Or lack thereof for some people, but I won't apologize, I have shit taste and I accept it. These are my top 50 and if you feel like you have similar taste to mine, I highly encourage you to pick up anything from this list. No, I love it to its every bits. If you do want an objective list, check out my video 100 best anime to watch of all time. It's really well received for touching every genre. That's all the time that I had. Thank you so much for spending the last 40 something plus minute. Uh, I haven't edited it yet, so I don't know. Listening to me ramble about my favorite anime. Hopefully there were a bunch for you to pick up and I hope I'll see you again next time. Times I've been on the wrong side, I've been ashamed So many memories, you know I'd like to change